as kind of a child growing up, I was also into gymnastics. Um, that's kind of my main sport at the time. Uh, and then as I got older, going into kind of academy, I kind of fell out of love with it. And I think it was, it is a very individual sport. And I suppose at that time I realised that wasn't for me and a team sport was, but it wasn't until I was maybe fourth year of school, I was about 15. Um, one of my best friend's sisters had tried to start a team and we were like, oh, let's go along, like it'll be a laugh, like it'll be funny, come on. Um, and that Monday night, I think it was, mum took me and I remember mum saying, what are you doing, like rugby? And I was like, oh mum, it's just for a joke, come on, it'll be fine. And I am not kidding, from that first one, I have never not wanted to play. You notice it from, I started like making a few big hits and coaches being like, Pfft. and I'm like, yeah, I can do this. And then as I kind of got to sixth year of school, it was kind of deciding where to go for university. And with rugby in mind, it was like, Edinburgh makes a lot of sense. Um, so I actually studied at Harriet Watt University. Um, they didn't have a rugby team, but I knew obviously there was plenty of senior teams in Edinburgh that I could join there. That was a huge jump, uh, going to senior rugby. I was, I was terrified. I actually almost started to think, do I love this anymore? And I think it was just the jump and I needed that, but I was terrified. I was honestly like, oh, I am out my depth. But that's kind of how you learn, how you grow. And that was with my first team. I was with Moneyfield Wanderers and they pushed me on a lot. And I think from being there through the coaches and that, I got into the Scotland under 20 setup. Can you look back at 15 year old you and kind of come to terms with where you're at now? Not at all, like and a lot of my really good friends, like some of my best friends from school who I'm still really good friends with, they kind of came along to train as well, had a bit of a laugh and kind of, like it wasn't for them and they are now like as if you're now playing for Scotland and I'm like it's mad but obviously when I'm playing and when I'm in camp and when I'm training it's completely normal but I suppose when I do reflect I think when I was 15 and that was me just trying it out for a laugh really it's quite big and especially where we live like in Aberdeenshire rugby is not a big sport here a lot of people find it difficult to field teams and all the rest of it so especially down here it's kind of it is crazy to think where do you think the main developments in the women's game have come in the last few years? Obviously, under Shade Monroe, the team progressed. Now, Philip Doyle's in. What elements have made it better and made the improvements? It, every kind of aspect of the game. All of us are not professional. Um, players have contracts in place which have kind of helped them with different aspects of their life so that they can play more rugby and play to a higher standard um, but I honestly believe that every single person in that team behaves as if they are professional in terms of the S&C involved like your the fitness the a lot of players move into different clubs just to play at a higher level and um, the time the amount of camps we're in now compared to the amount of camps we were back in when I started. Um, games played so much more test games, that's autumn tests now, summer tests. Um, that's just improved significantly as well with like the coaching as you say. Shade Monroe was a huge step forward for us and that being get, able to get the constant kind of feedback on games, analysis, there's just every aspect of it really has improved. Tell me how rugby fits in with your life. I decided to do my chartered accountant qualification and become hopefully a CA. So I'm a full-time auditor, <laughs> um, which maybe seems quite different to what, <laughs> what people might think I do. But um, yeah, I'm doing my CA exams alongside my full-time work whilst training it's one of these things again I started it all thinking it'll be fine like I'll manage it like there was no way I was going to stop rugby but it was huge for me to be able to get a solid career I've always been quite career driven but I suppose I didn't quite realize how much rugby would change for females and um, when I started I didn't really see a huge potential of it going professional so having a career kind of to fall back on was always really big for me but now, as the game's kind of progressed, I make it work. It's not, it's not ideal at all. Um, yeah, I work full-time, train 
most evenings and travel to Edinburgh kind of most weekends. It's yeah hard at times and I do think being here in Aberdeen you're a bit more isolated shall we say from kind of the central belt and obviously down south where there's the Tidal 15s and um, that's kind of where you want to be playing uh, to progress for rugby. Um, I don't know if part of me, if my rugby is maybe taking a hit because of this, but like I'm doing everything I can up here to kind of push myself, whether it, sometimes it is training by myself, just kind of anything to keep pushing forward. But you've got to kind of remember you've also got work in the background. There is professionalism in the game. Once you, you complete your studies and, and you're happy with the career side of things, if professionalism came along and called you, would it be something you, you would consider? I don't think anyone that has committed to your sport for as long as I feel I have now could say if the opportunity came along, you could turn it down. That's kind of what every athlete dreams of, really, that they're playing the sport they love for a living. Like, you couldn't really wish for anything else. Being professional, it's much more than just training every day and being able to kind of play more games or get time off it's it is like the recovery side of it the kind of mental side of it the an analysis side of it uh, these are things I maybe try to squeeze in in the small hours of the evening do you know what I mean which then you go into work the next day knackered but um, professionalism is kind of the dream I suppose. We're approaching another Six Nations now last year was disappointing but what are the genuine targets for the team and for yourself this season? I think you can only think about going forward again. Last last Six Nation wasn't great for us, but now it is looking forward to a much bigger picture. It's much more than just Six Nations. We're looking towards World Cup qualifiers. We want to do as best as we can in these Six Nations and we will go into every game looking for a win. We've had a very good build up to this campaign, so we want it to be one of our best, but everything we are doing is for these World Cup qualifiers. So yeah, we want to put in a performance, whether that's a win or a lose. We just need to see that we're taking the right steps forwards um, because ultimately we want to be at our peak come September. It's something like I ought, you dream about it and like we have to make it to a World Cup. It is honestly the pinnacle of kind of our sport. Like it would, be a bit of a pinch me moment when you think back to again maybe that 15 year old me just going for a laugh and then thinking I'm going to a World Cup and um, it would be huge and I mean you can kind of see from what Scotland women football have done that just has grown significantly and I think for us if we can make it to a World Cup that would really put something out there like people would see us more and I think you'd get much better coverage and hopefully you'd like to see more girls thinking I want to give that a go. Um, I think, yeah, that's that would be the dream.